Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're giving you guys another Tropics update. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also like to invite you to join our very exciting Discord server and Facebook group down below in the pinned comment. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this very active period could linger on into portions of August, or do you think we will have a little bit of a slowdown period before we reach the peak of the season? I've seen differing opinions on this for sure, so I wanted to see what your guys' thoughts are. Now, let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at the satellite imagery for our Invest 92L, which is kind of uh, the only system going on right now in the Atlantic besides tropical depression Hannah that is in the middle of Mexico somehow still a tropical depression very impressive uh, and on satellite we're still just looking at some scattered thunderstorms this one has not developed very far at all so far it is interacting with some dry air and in the thumbnail I did make sure to place a boom or bust a uh, little uh, title there because uh, this one definitely is a boomer bust. I could see how this one could become a very uh, big storm, but I also could see how this one could completely bust like Gonzalo. So this one is a 50-50 storm at this point. It is starting to struggle a little bit, uh, but I still am pretty confident that this one has a good chance of developing as well. Let's go ahead and look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we have an 80% chance of this one developing within the next two days. I think that this percentage could actually go down based on the satellite imagery I'm seeing. Uh, but perhaps not. Maybe it will develop in the next two days. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to move on to that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And then we're just going to get straight into some very exciting model guidance for this one. All right. Now, here we are looking at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we have a 90% chance of this one developing over the next five days. Based on the tilt, you can see that the National Hurricane Center is giving it. We have become very confident that this one is going to be going north of Dominican Republic and Haiti, which if you watched yesterday's video, you know I said that that's kind of really one of the key factors. If it goes south of those areas, it is going to most likely dissipate and get eaten alive. If it goes north of those areas, it is going to eventually move into some much, much more favorable conditions. And sure enough, I would say there's about an 80 or 90% chance that if this one doesn't dissipate, it's probably going to go north of Puerto Rico, north of Dominican Republic, and north of Cuba. So that really leaves a lot of options on the table. And as you can see here on our spaghetti models, uh, we have anywhere from Florida on these to kind of going out to sea close, closer to per Bermuda there, as you can see on that AVNI model. I don't know which one that is. Very, very wide margin. I've had people asking me all day, is this one going to hit New Jersey? Is this one going to hit South Carolina? Look, guys, it's way, 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 way too early to be pinpointing like that. Again, this one could completely dissipate before it even reaches the East Coast. So we really, really don't know. Uh, on the thumbnails, I've been saying potential East Coast impact, potential United States impact, because I want you guys to be very prepared that this one could eventually impact the United States. And we've had models flirting with that idea. Obviously, we like to be play it safe in that fashion. We like to make sure you guys are aware of the potential impacts you could feel. Uh, but at this point, it also look appears pretty possible that we see a fish storm, which basically means it curves out to sea too far east to really impact the United States. And that would be kind of a best case scenario where it's going to impact the least amount of people there. Uh, but also you can see there's many, many models that have this one heading straight for Florida, straight for North Carolina. That's kind of been the trend as of yesterday, kind of moved away from that a little bit for today. But these models are going to go back and forth. I want you guys to know I'm going to continue to update you guys on this. And also if you join our Facebook group, especially we have been posting these updates like over and over and over again. We have tons of people discussing this. So I'd highly recommend you join if you're interested in that or if you want more up-to-date information. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a different source for spaghetti models. We're going to look at the ensemble spaghetti models. We're going to look at the intensity guidance, which has changed a lot. We're going to look at the upcoming impacts this storm could really move into, including shear. Uh, and then we're going to kind of just take a look at some of our, uh, some more of our modeled forecasts. And then we're going to take a look at our official direct weather forecast. All right, now here we are taking a look at, first off, our second source of these spaghetti models. And as you can see, this one just has some different models uh, included here. Ignore that orange one. I had people commenting about that orange one that has it moving from Missouri straight through the mid-Atlantic, kind of southeast states. Uh, that one's picking up on a different system and considering it our Invest 92L, I have no idea why that's happening. Um, and it, what's funny is at the bottom of this map, it says if you're confused 
If this graphic causes any confusion, ignore the entire product. Uh, I'm certainly confused, so I'm going to, for the most part, ignore this product because of that orange one there. Uh, that's very, very confusing. Uh, but nevertheless, we do have most of these storms kind of taking a similar track that our last our last product of spaghetti models was showing. Again, uh, we only have one here showing it go south of Dominican Republic and Haiti, and it's just going south of that by, by just like a couple miles there. Uh, but really, for the most part, most of these have it going just north of Dominican Republic, just north of Puerto Rico, and going straight towards the Bahamas, and then potentially impacting the East Coast or being offshore of the East Coast. Though some have it heading straight for Florida as well, just like our previous map also showed. All right, now here's our GEFS model, which is our GFS ensemble model. Uh, and as you can see, it does, the color coding does make a difference, by the way. I did mention this before. Uh, the reds are a lower pressure. The greens and blues are a much higher pressure, kind of just a very weak, low pressure system. Yellows is 990 to 1000 millibars. Oranges and reds is like 970 to 990, which is bordering on probably a hurricane because of just how low that and how strong that low pressure system is. Most of these members still have a very strong storm, either being offshore of the East Coast, pretty far offshore to where there's no impacts, which again is the best case scenario probably. We do have one member have it entering the Gulf as a very weak storm. If this one moves into the Gulf, I'm almost positive it would be a weaker storm than if it goes up the Southeast Coast there. Uh, some of these have it hitting some of the United States on the East Coast, so really there are so many options on the table. That's why I want you guys to be completely aware of every possibility. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the Canadian Ensemble model. We're going to take a look at the intensity guidance and then some other things moving forward as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at that Canadian Ensemble model, which is not as good of a model, but we can see very similar outlooks here. It has less members, obviously. Uh, we have some showing it hit Florida, some having it hit the Carolinas, and then some having it as a fish storm. Again, I like this because of the fact that we have so many possibilities on the table. When a model wants to really pinpoint it that far out, it's kind of concerning because you know it could really fluctuate. But this gives us a good range of possibilities. We know it could hit Florida or it could be out to sea, which is a very wide range. And we know there's a high probability that it will be within that range if it doesn't dissipate, like I said before. And again, on this model as well, the more east or the more westward the models go, uh, actually the weaker the low pressure system, you can see they stay yellow or green if they hit Florida. And actually, if they are more out to sea a little bit uh, or maybe hitting North Carolina, they move into the oranges and reds probably because there's warmer waters out there and less land interaction. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to that intensity guidance, which is going to be crucial. And then we're also going to take a look at a few other things, including our direct weather cone forecast. All right, now here's that intensity guidance here. And as you can see, it has weakened a little bit according to most of these models. Again, we are going to see this fluctuate a lot. A lot of people have been asking me about this, uh, and I, I really think this is going to fluctuate a lot. At this point, I'm not ready to say this one will be a hurricane. Uh, I'm not ready to say this one will certainly be a tropical storm, though it seems very likely at this point. Uh, and I'm not ready to say anything, basically, because we saw what happened to Gonzalo. Uh, I made some pretty bold predictions there. I said it would be a tr strong tropical storm or probably a hurricane. It didn't end up being a hurricane, so I was, for the most part, wrong there. So I, I really want to take it with a grain of salt because we've seen these models struggle. Uh, and also, we've seen these storms struggle in this exact same region. Uh, so I really, really want to play it safe here. Though I do believe we have a high probability of at least reaching tropical storm status, and then it becomes a question mark after that. Uh, they do have it strengthening for the next 84 hours or so, and you do see there is a drop-off on the models, but they have been kind of flipping back and forth with this. A lot could change, and I'm going to need to really, really keep you guys updated on this outlook here, especially with the intensity guidance. Keep just, I want you guys to know uh, we are expected to head into tropical storm status in the next 48 hours. But again, looking at satellite, it just, it just does not seem as likely uh, as, as these models are showing. I think certainly within the next three days, if it does get its act together, though, we will see our next named storm. Now, let's go ahead and look at our direct weather forecast for this one for Invest 92L. And as you can see, we have kept a very, very slim probability that it could go south of uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti and potentially hit Jamaica, go south of Cuba. There's very, very slim chances of that. But as you can see, most of our cone goes to the north of those areas. And I do have it curving pretty far uh, offshore because I do think it is possible this could be a fish storm if things play out that way, but it also could be heading straight for the southeast coast or anywhere in between. I would say anywhere in between Bermuda and Florida is possible, anywhere between 
Bermuda and the Northeast is possible. Uh, so really, this one could track anywhere on shore of the East Coast, offshore of the East Coast. It's really a huge question mark, and the Gulf isn't even safe completely yet, even though the probabilities are quite low. Uh, nothing is impossible at this point. The only thing we know is it is heading westward, and we really need to watch how this one intensifies and how it interacts with the dry air, because we might not even have to worry about this one if it just gets eaten up by the shear and the dry air, though we really need to watch how it develops over the next 24 to 48 hours. That's really going to tell us a lot about this storm's a, a potential life moving forward. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how far do you think this one will intense? And Zeta Derv, I think I'm saying your name right, said, I think it will become a tropical storm. I'm guessing she meant at least a tropical storm. And I agree, I think it will become a tropical storm at least. Though I do think there is a slim chance that this one just completely dissipates from this point forward based on what the satellite imagery looks like. But I would say there's probably a 95% chance that we at least see a tropical storm. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.